All right, and welcome back to episode seven of Modern Prescription. My name is Dr. Deepak Dugar. I'm a facial plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. And I'm Dr. Toll, uh, and I'm an internist and a COVID, uh, COVID guy. COVID guy, COVID hunter, COVID king, COVID... COVID tester. COVID tester, the bubble tester. Today's a great I'm episode. Making, I'm trying to make LA its own bubble. Yeah, that would be testing great. testing everyone. That would be great. If we literally just gave LA to you, I think we could actually create a, a, a significant bubble effect here. It would be nice. It would be really nice. For my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> be a long line outside Peppermint Club. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Today's a great episode. We have uh, a great, our first uh, male fitness actor, model, who's coming on, Mario Rodriguez, a really good friend of mine, who's phenomenal. I think it gives us a great opportunity to talk about uh, men's health issues. Yeah, and that's the focus of today's episode, men's health, talking about testosterone, uh, gr human growth hormone, uh, basically steroid replacement therapy that men have been doing for years. Somehow we managed to not talk about the prostate, so we may have to uh, go back. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we got some good stuff in there. Yeah, good stuff in there. And then we'll do a little bit of updates on some other cool topics. Um, but this is our men's health episode, so uh, stay tuned and welcome to episode seven of Enjoy. Modern Prescription. Enjoy. Share, share, share with this with your friends. Yeah, especially your male friends. They're going to like this episode. Welcome to episode number seven of Modern Prescription. My name is Dr. Deepak Dugar. Lucky seven. Dr. Toll here. Let's get into it. So uh, I need you to, to explain to me what is going on with this Capitol Hill doctor who's yelling and shouting about hydroxychloroquine. Oh, the thing that the president retweeted. Yeah. So this is what this was actually really upsetting to me because of how many of who I thought were my really smart, well-educated <laughs> friends, like sent me this video and believed what was going on or wanted to know more. These are the same ones who sent so you pandemic. This video, so this was a video that was uh, from Breitbart News uh -huh. where basically they had 10 doctors all talking about how well hydroxychloroquine, the main person who keep, like was on the video was this lady. I think she was trained in medicine and from Africa. Um, but the bottom line is she has some. she's had these crazy theories in the past about D you know, devils implanting embryos in people mm -hmm. and aliens' DNA. And so that's the person that they're relying on for the information. But basically, I think the main point I wanted to get across to all my patients and friends who still are asking about hydroxychloroquine and all and whatever is just this point, is that coronavirus is a deadly virus. And the reason it's killing so many people is really because it's infecting so many people. And so we think about 0.1 to 0.5% of people who get it end up dying from it. So like one to five of in a thousand people. Mm -hmm. And when, when about half of those people are elderly people, if you talk about the younger population, it's really like 0.1 to 0.2%. Two percent, so one to two in a thousand that would die from yeah, it. Yeah, very. So rare. what she, what this woman is saying is, in her clinic with about a hundred people, mm -hmm. she's given them all hydroxychloroquine, and none of them have died, and that's her evidence that this is a cure. <laughs> the problem is, there's no, the way we do a scientific study is we take a huge population, th tens of thousands of people. And we give some of them one treatment and some another, and we see if less die in one group than another. Right. So she could have given a treatment where she prayed for them, or she could have given a treatment where she tapped them on both the left knee three times and the right knee three times before they left, and none of those people would have died. And she could have said that the knee tapping was a cure for COVID. Right, because none of them died. Because from none knee of tapping. them died, from, and they <clears> got the <throat> knee tapping. None of them died. And none of them died. So the problem is, again, you know, the president uh, of our country and the president of Brazil both said this was a cure. I think the main point, and I'll shut up, is in the countries that beat COVID, mm -hmm. you know, uh, New Zealand, China, um, South Korea, Taiwan, all of these countries be it with quarantines, masks, testing, mm -hmm. contact tracing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not medications. They didn't get cured because they just gave everyone hydroxychloroquine <laughs> and they were better. Right, right. All the countries that have a lot of malaria, like Brazil, India, these are countries with a huge supply of hydroxychloroquine and a lot of COVID and a lot of people dying from COVID. So right. hydroxychloroquine is not a cure. And this lady is crazy. And a lot of people who want to be you know, woke or go against the grain are reposting this thing and pretending that they know more than 
they do. Just because this person's a doctor uh, doesn't mean that she knows more than the tens of thousands of doctors who... Right. Right. It's like the pandemic 2.0. Remember that video? Yeah. It's like people, a, exactly. Yeah. It's just people, you know, I think people like conspiracy theories. I think people are depressed. Fun. They need a, they need a cure. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. They need a cure. Exactly. We want to have a cure. We want to know that there's something out there. That's what the Hollywood answer is. The Hollywood answer is always like the serum at the end of the movie. I thought the Hollywood answer to the depression is to get some Botox. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's a great article about that. Depression uh, has been shown in this recent study that <laughs> Botox is helping cure depression potentially. And it's interesting because it's multifold. So uh, obviously they're not injecting it into the IV or anything. Cosmetic Botox yeah. use is what they found decreases depression. And one of it's obvious, like, uh, of course, if you look better, you feel better. You feel better, you're less depressed. You know, it makes sense. Anyone who gets Botox understands that after three, four months when it wears off, you kind of get a little, you know, a little rough around the edges <laughs> wanting it. So, you know, that makes sense. But the other part of it that was really interesting is what they're seeing is that when you do the Botox and you actually decrease the frown muscles and decrease the forehead muscles that are really overly strained, especially when you're upset and angry. And so now by weakening those muscles, you have less tension in your forehead in those muscles. That, they said, was enough to cause a relaxation and less depression. I think that's true. It's it's sort of, it's like, I don't know if this is really the same type of thing, but a, a lot of times if you just move your body in a relaxed way, it relaxes you. That's mm -hmm. kind of one of the parts of yoga. Yeah, You know, you you sit in a relaxed way, you relax your muscles and you feel relaxed. So totally. I could see how that could work. Totally, do, yeah. Do you, I, know, I have some doctors that I work with that use Botox also for tension headaches, for people who yeah. get headaches. Yeah. And that may be similarly, Very. You know, you're relaxing their muscles yes. and that may end up helping their mood and all these other things. Yeah, we do that a lot for like the posterior occipitus muscles, yeah. like the occipital muscles. We'll yeah. do some Botox to help decrease neck strain. And that gets rid of a lot of people's like posterior occipital headaches that they have. Do you but, do that? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. I'm not like an expert yeah. or specialist at yeah. uh, neurological injections of Botox. Um, nor do I want to be, to be completely honest. Um, but uh, it helps. It does yeah. help. You know, even like... Um, no, I've had patients do great after getting it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it makes a big difference, I think. But, um, you know, every medication, you know, whether it's Botox or, you know... You know, today we're going to get into some really cool topics about men's health and talk about, you know, um, testosterone, HGH, mm -hmm. steroids, and talk a little bit about that to uh, educate a little bit more because it's such a hot topic right now with sports yeah. being back. Yeah. Um, and so every medication has side effects. And so it's about balancing the risk-benefit ratio. You know, no matter, right. no matter what you do in life, everything has a risk. You know, leaving your house today has a risk, especially yeah. in the world of COVID. So it's about, benefit. you know, weighing the risk-benefit ratio. So let's talk a little bit about the men's health medications. What are the popular ones that people are talking about requesting? Like, what do you hear about in your practice? In terms of like performance or what, like performance, longevity, longevity uh, sexual health, like just overall, just well being. What are guys, you know, the obvious one everyone knows about is testosterone, but what else is there besides that? Um, I, yeah, I think, you know, so there's, there's t two sides of that. So there's testosterone, people who want energy, sex drive, um, you know, stuff like that, definitely testosterone, mm -hmm. some people interested in things like, uh, human growth hormone, mm -hmm. um, on the opposite side, on the more longevity fitness side, helping your metabolism are things like metformin, um, that are helpful for, uh, weight loss and for, um, kind of helping your body's metabolism get rid of sugar better. And metformin normally is a drug for diabetes. Yeah. So metformin is a really interesting drug because it is the it's sort of the mainstay. It's the first agent we want everyone with diabetes to get on, and the reason it has a whole lot of metabolic benefits. So, it um, it decreases the amount of sugar that your liver puts out into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. So it sort of constantly makes your blood sugar slightly lower. But it does a whole lot of other things um, on the metabolism side that are beneficial. So a lot of people sort of see it as a wonder drug. There are doctors out there, you know, these, um, especially if you look up doctors who do like, quote unquote, long longevity, yes. hormone sort of doctors. Um, there's a lot of people who think that metformin may actually allow you to live longer because of some of these metabolic effects. And so wow. I know a lot of uh, some doctors that prescribe it to m many or most postmenopausal women because mm -hmm. of, they think there's some metabolic effects because a lot of women gain weight post menopause. Uh -huh. So not, not just to diabetes patients. I'm pretty aggressive with metformin on pre-diabetics yeah. as well. So when someone's A1C, 
and an A1C is a number where we're measuring your average sugar over the last three months. Mm -hmm. If that starts ticking up, especially if you're someone who decides, you know, maybe I want to make a change in my life. I'm ready to lose some weight and change my diet. And this kind of, you know, will increase your changes that you're willing to make by maybe another 20%. Yeah. So I'm pretty big. I'm pretty, you know, big on starting metformin early on. There's some stu studies on people who have just been on metformin for a long time that there's a, a decrease in cancer risk actually from being on metformin. So there's some, this is like one of the very few drugs that people really feel has mostly good effects and very few side effects. There are risks with it of lactic acidosis um, and some other things. And so not anyone should just go buy it off the street and take it. You should talk to your doctor first. Mm -hmm. But um, it's one of those drugs that has a lot of potential benefits. And when would you start recommending someone take metformin in their twenties, thirties? No 40s? one should. I don't think anyone should do it without consulting with their doctor. Yeah, um, it's something that could be beneficial if you are either overweight or your sugars are trending in the wrong direction towards pre-diabetic mm -hmm. or. A lot of pre-diabetics, I'm I start early on metformin really? because I want them out of the pre-diabetic pre pre range. Yeah, and so if being on metformin, even if we're only sort of cycling on it to get someone's A1C down while they change their diet and habits, um, that may be a way to sort of help their body's metabolism to get back into a better state. Mm -hmm. The problem with diabetes is it sort of runs away from you, so you're it, it's a it's sort of multiple things that go on top of each other. So you start getting a little insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. Then as your body gets more insulin resistance, you make more insulin and insulin is a growth factor. So it makes you gain weight. Got and it. this is one of the reasons why human growth hormone yes. for all its benefits yeah. in terms of human growth hormone, if you have an injury, you will heal faster. Mm -hmm. If you are trying to gain muscle mass, mm -hmm. you will gain muscle mass faster. But the side effect is that you'll have an incre worsening insulin resistance. So right. And that's why they commonly give metformin with uh, HGH sometimes, right? Yeah. So a lot of, uh, you know, these longevity doctors, that's a combination where you're trying to treat the side effects of HGH with metformin essentially ahead of time. So before you see that rise in the insulin resistance, you're actually treating it ahead of time with the metformin. Got it. And the most common complications that you see with, or that are seen with HGH, generally speaking, are the, the metabolic stuff. So like the uh, diabetic Yeah, so if you're pre-diabetic and you go on it, you may see a rise in your A1C, uh -huh. um, which can lead, which basically means you're getting closer to diabetes or mm -hmm. causing diabetes. So number one, is that That's number two? That's definitely the most, the, the biggest concern for me to prescribe yeah. it just on. The second thing is, for me personally, is the theoretical risk in terms of cancer. Mm. And so uh, HGH is a growth factor. So what does that mean? It is telling cells to grow. Mm -hmm. What cancer is, cancer is any cell in your body, whether that's in your pancreas or in your lung or wherever, that's become autonomous and it's making copies of itself on its own. You're right. And so when someone has, people all the time have one cell that goes awry and your immune system finds it, identifies it, and kills it. Just like it identifies viruses and bacteria. Another really important reason for good immune health is cancer surveillance in your own body. Mm -hmm. If one of these cells goes awry and now all of a sudden it's an autonomous cancer cell and you are taking a growth factor, mm -hmm. you could think about that as like, pressing the gas pedal on the process for that and not giving it enough time for your immune system to surveil it. So it, it, I don't think it directly causes cancer, but you could see how in a general sense, it could increase your cancer risk. And mm -hmm. I think that's why doctors have hesitated away from it. For there, patients who don't need it, like electively giving it. Right. Yeah. And the, the main problem is there's no good trials. Yes. There is not a trial with tens of thousands of people on it for any mm -hmm. length of time. So there are trials with someone who has a deficiency in their growth factor, so they're very short or small as a child, mm -hmm. and you give it to them and yep. see what happens. We know what happens with people who, um, from their pituitary gland, have too much human growth hormone. That's right. called acromegaly. Yeah. These are these people who are you know over seven feet tall. Right. Often Huge. people like Andre the Giant yep. or... There's some basketball players. Yeah. They, even, NBA they may wonder if Tony past. Robbins has it. Yeah. Tony Big Robbins guy. may have had it <laughs> yeah. or just taken too much. <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah, so the thing is, a lot of those guys, if you look at the lifespan of 
DeAndre the Giants, the Georgie Marisons, mm-hmm. they all died in their 40s or 50s of right. heart attacks. And and that's the other complication that's is that number three. left ventricular hypertrophy, you actually cause changes to the remodeling of the heart when you're on it for too long. Right. So one the reason one of the reasons we always talk about hypertension, high blood pressure, is just like any other muscle, if your heart is pumping against a high pressure, just like when you're doing bicep curls over and over again, if your heart's pumping against a higher pressure, you build up muscle in the heart. Yep. And counterintuitively, uh, when it comes to your heart, eventually there's no space for the blood to fill and it becomes a problem. You yeah. Know? And uh, when someone's on HGH, without the high blood pressure necessarily, you're just building muscle, including heart muscle. Right. And that can cause a similar problem. And so some people can end up with congestive heart failure or other heart problems from... Yeah, and I think that that's the big lesson is that in the, especially in the weightlifting communities and the sports communities, a lot of people are not getting this prescribed from a physician. They're getting right. it from their buddies. They're being handed it right. at the gym. And the key is to make sure that you're, if you're even thinking about doing an optimization course, to do it with physicians. Yeah. So they can monitor you. They can check you. They can check your heart, check your yes, thyroid. We, your check echo. Your, and yeah. 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 And thyroid's the other one that causes major issues that people's uh, thyroid T3 will actually stop getting translated so then uh, they'll be on T3 replacement for their thyroid hormone. So yeah, having your thyroid checked, having your heart checked, having your your sugars and your A1C checked, um, these are all very critical things if you were to even think about doing uh, any kind of hormone replacement therapy as a male. Yeah, but I think that's important because a lot of guys, you know, again, this is usually taught from other guys. Yeah. You don't you don't talk about it with your doctors because right. it's kind of like poo-pooed on. You know, it's like the mental health thing we were talking about. Yeah. We're like, you know, taking steroids like who's going to talk to the doctor well, about I that think, I think what's interesting is the <clears throat> way doctors are taught in school like with the, our, our Hippocratic oath is to do no harm mm-hmm. and so this idea of sort of like optimizing someone where it's not truly longevity based because right. most most physician based thinking is how do I get this person sitting in front of me to live the most number of years they can live right but there's another way to look at it where maybe this person is willing to accept a small risk of cancer yes. or they're willing to accept, I may live five years less, but I'm going to be so much more vigorous and right. have so much more energy and be able to do all these things <clears throat> in my youth. Right. And it may be worth it for them. And so who am I as a physician to tell you this is the right, I'm not there Absolutely. at your house to say, you're, you're the one allowed to say, am I going to have a drink tonight, a cocktail? Yep. Am I going to, you know, Absolutely. try Absolutely. recreational drugs? <clears throat> am I going to go skydiving? All these right. things are your decisions. But then why is this, you know, this is another one of these my body, my choice things. I totally that agree. It's not really a thing we talk about. 100% agree. Um, and most doctors, because because of that very thing, and I never learned about this in medical school. No. I know about this because I work with really smart, great doctors who do this. Right. Who I I have patients who see them that are on these types of programs, so I know what programs are on because I want to make sure I'm at least watching out for these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is not really things that we learned in medical right. school. Right. When you're taking care of a lot of high peak performance yeah. athletes. Yeah. So, um, but I, I love what you said because like a lot of doctors don't even think of what you just said, which is thinking about how do I make this person live as long as possible? A lot of doctors are just thinking, how do I solve this problem, right? They're just so problem-based instead of longevity-based. But you're so right, because what's worse, smoking a cigarette or doing HGH? Cigarette. Cigarette, no question about it. And yet we're totally, so many more people are on cigarettes in America than on HGH. Oh, yeah. You know, and so I, I think that we have this stigma, like you said, because we get attached to the doctrines. And uh, I think it's, it's you know, we have to be, as physicians, a little bit more awake that people can make those decisions. My body, my choice. Yeah, I ha- I, I don't know if I've ever told you this story. It's amazing. So I have a patient who's like, I think she's like 89 or 90. <laughs> and she came to me and she had she had this little time. She's an amazing human being. She still works. And I don't want to say what she does so people will know who she is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She works. She's amazing. And she had this little tiny baby stroke. So she, she had been on hormone replacement since, since menopause. So for like 40 years. Wow. And... Um, she had this little tiny baby stroke, so I started her on an aspirin, and I and basically um, her gynecologist, who was doing the hormone replacement, told her she had to go off the hormones because that may have contributed to the clot. Mm. And so um, then she goes off for about a month, and then she comes back and she's like, "Doctor Toll, I have to tell you, this has ruined my sex life." And so <laughs> basically, <laughs> she told me she's like, "Listen, I'm 90 years old." I have great orgasms. 
I've been having them for 40 years <laughs> and I'm not losing them. I don't care if I have another stroke. It's not worth it. And That's so, amazing. And I love her and I, I agree with her. Yeah. So if she wants her orgasms, she At deserves that. And, yeah, she deserves it. And so I, I <clears throat> said, listen, I, listen, <laughs> you're going back on it then. It's fine. If you, listen, as long as you, 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 you know, we're going to agree that we're having this conversation that yes. you totally understand. The risks, yes. That there's course. a risk, but I I get it. Yeah, my body, my choice. I think that's I think that's going to apply to more things in the future. Uh, especially with COVID. <clears throat> I mean, people are now making the decision, my body, my choice, do I wear a mask or not? Yeah. You know, it's like, I think that's taking a little bit the too far. The problem is but- that becomes they're choosing for other people. Yes, yeah, exactly. And that's the difference. That's the difference. Yeah, but that's so cute. 90, years old, 90 year old Amazing. orgasm. It was actually more it. graphic than that, but I decided not to, <laughs> to tell the whole thing. Spare our listeners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. So that that's great. I mean, I, I think that's really interesting. And, I, and we're going to hear more today because we're talking to Mario Rodriguez. I am excited. He's super excited because he is a fitness he, guru. Yeah. He looks uh, pretty big. <laughs> he looks pretty big. He's a big guy in person. He's a big guy. He's a big you know? guy, yeah. He, he's a football player, uh, and so he kind of has that look yeah. and build, and he's been like that since he was a kid. And yeah. I've known him a long time. Because you can never tell on Instagram. It's like he, he could be 5'2". Right, like Tom Cruise. he's like 6'5". Yeah, like you meet Tom Cruise in yeah. person, and he's so short. Yeah. He's a nice guy, but he's yeah. so short. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so tell me uh, a little bit more about... Um, What's going on with testing and COVID and any, Ugh. any, any, is it getting better? Is it getting worse in terms of the testing or people getting so tested easier now? We're getting, so from my personal side of things, we're getting our turnaround times much faster now. So we're back down to about 48 hours for sure. 24 hours in a lot of the cases. Amazing. We can get. So Amazing. a lot of more, you know, for, we're doing a lot of uh, testing prior to flying now and wow. prior, prior to surgeries, obviously, where yes. people need the turnaround time. Yeah. So now we're able to do that uh, pretty consistently, which has been nice. Um, but, you know, overall, I think in California, numbers are climbing, deaths are staying pretty stable, luckily. Um, but I think, I think we're sort of going for, uh, you know, herd immunity. I think they've given mm-hmm. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just the overall strategy. Now. They, there is no strategy. <laughs> yeah, there's I no still strategy, say, yeah. I, don't, I don't know, you know, I don't know, but the six, I still say the $600 that we're spending per week to keep people not working. Mm-hmm. I just don't understand why we can't spend the same $600 to test people six times so a week. They can go to work. They could go to work. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's crazy. Yeah, if everyone was point. tested six times a week, we wouldn't have COVID anymore because right. then we would be like these other countries. Where once where you're positive, you stay home. Quarant- you quarantine. Yeah, we you're contact forced trace. Quarantine. Yeah. Yeah. We need to hire <clears throat> contact tracers that are tested six times a week and test other people six times a week. Maybe China will do it for us through TikTok. I think we should hire TikTok. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just let them do it you for could, us. They can contact trace. They know where you've been. <laughs> That's so true. You know, they know who you're dancing with. <laughs> Seriously, you're TikToking at a party. We trace you back. Well, what about what about instead of TikTok? What about the dogs? Have you heard of this? The dogs are sniffing for COVID now. I heard that. I I honestly <laughs> I don't know much about it. Yeah, but. But I do know that it would be it would it would be great if it worked. They're saying the study's saying that dogs can sniff out COVID with ninety four percent accuracy is what the study's saying. Uh, that's raising the possibility of using dogs at sporting events, airports, instead of doing actual testing. I mean, that would be really cool if it worked. I don't know. Yeah. I know if they had, if the dog said no every time, it would be right like 97% yeah. of the time. So. Just that baseline. Yeah. 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 So basically, if I brought my, my little Yorkie. And you told him no. Just taught him how to say no. Yeah. He would be better than their sniffer Perfect. Dog. I'm going to bring yeah. my dog to the yeah. airport. He, <laughs> just he needs a job. Lazy. I love my dog. <laughs> Uh, that's so funny. Well, the other thing we were talking about earlier was like right now on Instagram the past week, everyone's been posting these black and white photos, all the women, yeah. and they're saying challenge accepted. Yeah. And there's this whole theme about it. And, you know, everything in life has conspiracy theories. But one of the theories about why this is happening is because of the Turkish femicide that's happening where they're killing women in Turkey that are going just completely unaccounted for, unanswered. And so what th- what's happening is they're putting up these black and white photos of these women to show that, you know, this could be me next because that's kind of what's happening in Turkey. They put up these photos of these women. So all the women in solidarity across the world are putting it up just to put a little bit of light towards uh, what's happening. And I feel like with these social media 
things. I used to think this is all stupid, to be honest. Like I used yeah. to think this stuff is so dumb. Now I'm starting to realize it does have a good purpose because enough attention does draw anxiety towards an issue right. that might create some change. And like even with like the Black Lives Matter movement, I feel like, you know, a lot of people felt um, like, oh, you know, this isn't necessary. And I feel like it was so necessary. Now I understand even more and why yeah. I think it's even more necessary because also there, black people got to the point where it's like, w- listen, it can't be like under the cover. We need to know who are, are our allies. Yeah. You know, put your post up, you know, tell us that you care about us because we can't tell anymore. You know, it's been so many years. So I feel like all these social movements actually are very empowering. And even though it seems like you're not doing anything besides tweeting and posting, it's really important. That- this one's interesting because I think, I don't know how you feel, but if you're a man that identifies with these and wants to promote women's, mm-hmm. you know, obviously this not being okay, but it's yeah. not really something we can post. It's right. like an uncomfortable. Right. Like how do you as a man? Right. Well, what I've been doing is I've just been reposting some other female. Like oh, I, that's cool. my sister posted yesterday. Idea. She's a doctor. She's yeah. a surgeon. So I reposted her just in solidarity. Cause, that's great. Um, but yeah, yeah, I totally agree. But I, I just feel like I used to just poo poo all these social media movements. Cause I'm like, Oh, this isn't real. This isn't activism. Yeah. You're just reposting. And now I feel like, you know, it does have a purpose. I think it has an effect. Yeah. I think it does. There's a reason why the, Younger generations are more woke. Yes, exactly. Because they're so much more consciously plugged in, like yeah. literally tuned in. Yeah. So the question is if they're too woke and sometimes go against themselves. I think yeah. there's sometimes that's happening. But. Right, right. It's a balancing act. Yeah. It's a balancing act. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk today with Mario. So uh, stay tuned. And uh, coming up, Mario Rodriguez. All right, and we want to welcome our very special guest, one of my dear friends, one of my besties, yeah. uh, the legend Mario Rodriguez. Oh, that's too much. And, uh, <laughs> thank you for being thank you, here. For, thank you for having me. You're thank welcome. You so for anyone who doesn't know, I think everyone knows who they Mario all is. Know. Yeah, they all know. Well, every, maybe every, some of you guys. Every girl stares at his <laughs> photos. All the female listeners. <laughs> yeah. Man. All the guys, too. Half of my guy friends are like, dude, Mario, I get told about him all the time. I miss those days. <laughs> They're, They're, still <laughs> They're still here. They're still here. They're here. You're just not around people. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm home now. So, so <laughs> Mario, just a little intro. So Mario is a TV actor and movie actor yeah. who has been doing a lot of work, been busting his butt. Uh, new TV show, The Family Business, is out right now. Yeah. Season one was epic. Yeah. Amazing role. You had an amazing job on it. Yeah. Doing movies. Yeah. You're doing YouTube, sh- your no, own YouTube started, channel. I just started YouTube. I'm late, yeah. guys, too. Yeah, I'm late no. to the party. but uh, no, That's awesome. Late, better late than ever. You know? yeah. Tons of appearances. Always been an appearance guy. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I love those things. we're going to talk a little bit about your health, your fitness, your yeah. Instagram journey, and talk about it all. I love to share. Yeah, Let awesome. you guys know what's going on. Awesome. So <laughs> tell us, how, where did it all start from? So you were a young kid. Where'd you grow up? <sighs> how yeah. did you become this well, I was sexy, good, buff guy? Oh, <laughs> come on, man. No, but uh, <laughs> I'll give you a little quick rundown. I, you know, I wasn't my... My parents were kind of like in and out of my life. But yeah. uh, my growl was raised mainly by my grandmother. So wow. uh, I went to, you know, I played high school football. I played like the typical story, you know, and then... Uh, so uh, high school a, football, what position did you play? I played tight end and linebacker, and I was actually a, a, like a, a a really good athlete. But uh, as soon as I got out of high school, it was just like all the problems hit. You know, my grand my grandparents bought a place in Mexico. They ended up like, hey, you're pretty much on your own. I was like wow. 17 years old. Wow. So wow. It was a long, it was a long crazy ride. And then, uh, long story short, uh, the Instagram thing. Um, I just started. I, I made an account in 2014, mm-hmm. long time ago. And then uh, just they socially, even, yeah, just socially, didn't even use it, you know. I just and then I started getting on it because my buddy's like, dude, you got to get on this thing; it's blowing up, kind of like how TikTok is right now. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I jump on it and I start taking like little selfies. And the next thing you know, like all these modeling agencies, and I was like, I didn't think it was just happened so fast. Wow. And the next thing you know, I'm traveling to Switzerland for appearances, Germany. Wow. <laughs> wow. Everybody knows me over there. I was like crazy. I'm walking down these little tiny roads and. <laughs> I'm like, all you see is hills. Like, it's just so crazy. And it was, it was, a, it was a definitely a, a great experience I'll never forget. So. Wow. So kind of accidental almost, though. You didn't, kind, you yeah, didn't scheme this. You didn't totally plan this. Totally accidental. I didn't, I wasn't planning anything. I didn't even have a manager the first year, so. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow, wow, wow. And where was your, how did your fitness journey collide with all this? Well, I've always been, you know, somewhat in shape, especially I just kind of got a, got used to it from high school, you know, working out. And then uh, just kind of followed me into my, the, you know, my, most of my, Lot early twenties and stuff. So, uh, and then uh, I kind of took a break, 
And then I got out, you know, I let the Hollywood get the best of me a little bit. <laughs> Started hanging out with the, you know, different people, different circles. And then you kind of start getting softer, you know, going to dinners, drinking all the time. Mm -hmm. Not all the time, but, you know, occasionally, which yeah. came, started happening a little too often. Yeah. And you feel like that kind of threw you out of that, your routine. Then, the, then I had a family and then, and then uh, that kind of just slowed me down a lot. And then the COVID thing happened. And then now I'm on my way back up right now. So I've been training pretty hard and uh, just just busting my ass. So I think a lot of listeners are, you know, look at you and say, how do you, how do you actually maintain, you know, first of all, you've gone through all these things, which yeah. you've managed to break through and always yeah. get back on your feet, but also just to be able to stay in shape and be looking so well now during COVID with all these months, what are you in a gym? Are you working out at home? Do yeah, you have yeah. weights at home? What are you doing? Yeah. Right now, uh, while I was going to the, to the gym Equinox, like everybody else, like I had Gold's gym. Then this COVID thing hit, and then uh, I was actually on my like way up again, you know. Then this COVID thing happened, and I was kind of stuck for a minute because they, the gyms closed, obviously everything. Yeah. Uh, so I got a home gym, and nice. then I uh, just started. I built it myself. I started with wow. the like foundation. I have a little place, man. You know, yeah. everything's. I have a small little town home, so I have a small, pretty decent sized patio in the back. So I just put the rubber paddings down there. Got my cage, Olympic bars and stuff, and just you know started working out at home. Awesome. Wow, that's all. Because I see the cutest photos that you post with your son. He comes he's to like the, he comes, with you. I'll work out. He comes knocking on the window, and I just, I, he just staring at me with the eyes, and I'm just like, all right. I'm like, dude, I gotta, I gotta kill this workout. Oh but God. it's like, it's cool. Yeah. If if nothing else, if not for the sexy, amazing photos, follow Mario just so you can see his cute, almost two year old son. He's yeah. adorable. I love him, man. Oh it's, man, uh, it's adorable. Definitely a blessing. Kids are definitely a blessing. What makes you work out? What what gets you motivated? Them. Now, like I, because I kind of feel like, kind of like. You know, I'm falling off a little. Not falling off, but I just feel that way. Yeah. It doesn't I can definitely feel a change. And I'm just, I'm not used to that. So I just, you know, I figured, you know, I just, uh, not just for, not just because of that, but for my kids. Yeah. Just for my better well being, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for myself. Uh, so I just started just crazy. I'm just working out like a maniac right now. Just trying to, I'm eating as best. I'm not drinking. I'm eating good. And uh, I feel great now. Like wow. I just have, I'll have all this momentum again and I'm just, I'm running with it. So I have found that in, you know, in my practice, I'm an internal medicine doctor, so I yeah. take care of all sorts of, from 18 to 100, you know. Yeah. But I found that, you know, men, younger men, even if ones that are pretty fit or work out don't always necessarily go to the doctor. Yeah. Are you someone who goes to the doctor? Do you check your blood work? Do Are you yeah. looking at things like, how is your A1C? And is that something you're seeing how your metabolism is doing? Are you are you getting down into the scientific part of working out or how? Yeah. Now that I'm old, I'm, I'm going to be 35 in August 20th, wow. so that's just around the corner. You're still I'm still 23. <laughs> oh, man, stop it. <laughs> I appreciate it. No, keep it going. Man. No, but uh, I just, as I got older, I've noticed that when my late 20s, I was pretty good shape, like probably the best shape of my life in my 27, 28, 29. And then once I got to 30, 31, I definitely felt a, like a slowdown. And like I was more, I was a lot tired. I, had, I was more fatigued. Uh, then I started wor wondering why I just didn't have any energy. So I went to uh, get my blood work done and my testosterone level was at two something. And the, the doctor was like, that is pretty normal? low. What's so normal? Free, a normal free testosterone for a young guy could be like two up to 15 even for free Whoa. testosterone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so it, was, low. it was really low. low. Yeah, yeah. Low. yeah. It was really like, low. So he was like, well, we got to get you back up to an optimal, like a good level, you know, because it's, it's actually unhealthy to have low testosterone. Yeah. And, um, so I had to, uh, I got my blood work done and I was able to get on a testosterone replacement. Yeah. Which is, uh, I thought it was kind of like, I don't want to take, you know, t testosterone. I never really messed with anything. So I was kind of like frowned upon, I frowned on it a little bit, but I mean, it's actually, it's, you know, I got to do what's good for me. You know, I have a family mm -hmm. and it's, it's not as bad as everybody makes it seem if you do it, you know, the, the right way. So you're right. doing it where you're attempting to get to like a normal level, not That's like it. a through the yeah, roof. Yeah, because level. I've yeah. always been a muscular big guy. Yeah. I didn't need a lot like crazy, you know, shots or anything. I just need yeah. to actually do micro dosing. Yeah. So it's like, I do like very small amount, like once or twice a week. Yeah. And then it's just to get the, you know, the wheels turning and then, uh, mm. 
the rest I do all the, I mean, obviously you got to put the work in. Yes. So. And have you felt more energetic, more strength, more I feel energy? amazing. Yeah. I feel, yeah. I feel like back to like when I was in my late twenties Wow. Yeah. and I needed that because I was wondering why I was just so tired all the time. And it was just, it was, I was concerned. I thought something else was wrong with me, mm -hmm. but that was, that was, that was what, what happened. And so. this is, I think something, you know, last week we were talking about how, you know, mental health is something that we really don't talk about. Mm -hmm. I think men with testosterone issues is another thing that 100%. people don't like to talk about. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty common. Like, yeah, in my typical yeah. standard yeah. annual physical, I'm checking people's testosterone, free testosterone, uh, adrenal hormones. We're making sure everything's working, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of, you know, if you go to like your standard doctor's appointment, they're sort of just checking like those main basic things and sometimes we're missing things like that right and that can totally change how you feel totally yeah. 100 percent. like i've that that was something new to me and i was now i'm aware of everything like right. i'm always you know i've always been pretty self-aware about my body <clears throat> but i was really shocked i thought something else i thought i had like i was thinking of really bad things like i thought wow. maybe i was had some kind of like terminal like cancer or something because i was <laughs> no, like no, no. Well, it was just all of a sudden Scary. i was just really really wow. weak like i didn't have no energy no drive wow um Sex part, you know, my, I've always been fine with. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. That, I mean, that wasn't the problem, but uh, just making that clear, guys. <laughs> but uh, once I got uh, once I got my blood work done, they checked everything. They yeah. said they checked like my, you know, your liver, your kidneys, yeah. and all the functioning, function, all that stuff. Um, yeah, and he was like, yeah, it's pretty low. I think that's why you're feeling the way you feel. And once I got this, like, started getting on the uh, the testosterone therapy or whatever, I felt amazing yeah i think a lot of young men i think i can't remember if we talked about this on the show or just one time we were hanging out but we were talking about how sometimes men in like the late 30s or early 40s or whatever mm -hmm. may have some erectile issues or, yeah. or at least sex drive issues but the erections are okay mm -hmm. and their first go-to is oh i need cialis or whatever yes, yes but they really should start by making sure that the testosterone levels and their yeah, hormones look normal absolutely because sometimes if you don't fix that you can fix the erection but you're not getting to the root of the problem right no, and yeah. it's like it's like you said with the mental health thing a lot of people think like taking growth hormone or taking testosterone is like oh, are you taking steroids yeah. it's like there's a whole medical component yeah. to this it's not just you know sports enhancement always you know what yeah. i mean that's a part of it as well that's really necessary for life but there's a medical component if you need yeah. it or you're low on testosterone or growth hormone you should be taking these um through a monitored setting of course yeah, yeah. although i do wonder with some of these athletes now being able to compete at a high level mm -hmm. in the late 30s, you know, such as LeBron uh, playing in the first game tonight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you think? Do you think LeBron's taking something? I think so, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, look, if you're really healthy throughout the, most of your life, your young life, you can kind of carry that into your 30s. I feel that at least that's how I feel about it. Yeah. Um, I Like, I was different. I stopped and I was just doing totally the opposite thing <laughs> to, yeah. make it, to make your testosterone lower. Yeah. But, um, I, yeah, I, I would believe so. I mean, um, you got to fun. You got to, you know, function at a high level. So, right. I mean, and these guys, a lot of these guys are young, and I, I for sure, I would. I mean, that's my opinion. But yeah, yeah I think I, there's a difference between the players who are very skillful and they, they lose athleticism in their 30s but they can get by on like their experience guile and they're still good but right. not at peak form. The, the difference between that and someone who's so explosive still. Yeah. 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 And you know, is. and like, genetics play a big role, sure. obviously. But I mean, mm -hmm. as far as like that, it's the energy part. You yeah. know, you gotta. I, I mean, yeah, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 When we were talking earlier. I think it's a great point because like LeBron's at his peak. I mean, it's great. He's he's always at his peak. He's, yeah. He hasn't not. He's, he's never not been at his How peak. Thirty five. He's yeah, one yeah. year older than me. So yeah, yeah he's 30, 35 I'm going on thirty six. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's yeah, right. Because yeah. I'm going to be thirty five yeah. like, soon. So yeah, and he's been at his peak the whole time. Yeah, like, he's never not been at the peak yeah. of his game, which is crazy. I'm a big LeBron fan. Yeah, yeah a huge too. LeBron fan. All three of us. Huge. Yeah. I mean, he's going to crush everyone. I mean, I'm so excited. I'm I hope he does. I really do. I root for the guy all the time. I'm not a big basketball guy, but I definitely will watch him in big games. Oh yeah, I mean he came to the Lakers first of all to win championships, right? You don't Lakers is either you win championships or 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 else. Like there's no yeah, like oh yeah. we did great this season. Yeah. It's either you won the championship or else. Yeah. So he came here for that, and then second of all, Kobe passed away. Yeah. Third of all, first season didn't go that well, and second season got completely rocked by COVID. Like there's nothing he wants more right now than to just destroy and dominate. Yeah. 
I, uh, I agree. <laughs> but it's we talked about exciting. earlier, like you were saying about peak and like you feel like in your fitness journey, you ha- you hit a peak with the Instagram at one point. You felt like you were at a peak. Yeah. And then, you know, we we're talking about Michael Jordan, you know, yeah. no matter who you are in life, you, you have to capitalize these peaks, right? What, what was your comments on that? Yeah. So, you know, for everybody listening out there, like if you're going to, if you're growing on Instagram or any kind of social media platform, my advice, my biggest regret was one of my biggest regrets was, uh, you know, not not capitalizing in an extent like you know, jumping on other platforms, growing. You got to constantly grow your platform. I mean, your blah, your brand, yeah, yeah, <laughs> your, yeah, yeah, your brand and other platforms to keep to stay irrelevant, pretty much, and, and yeah. to continue the ride. Me, I was so small minded, and I was always stuck. Oh, just Instagram because it was just the biggest thing at the time, and. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, just that's one of my one of my regrets. Are you doing TikTok now? No, <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to get Jeff to. I'm do not TikTok. against TikTok, but I just I'm not gonna dance, man. And stuff like that. I mean, I feel you. I, I just feel you. I, I'm not against dancing. I you know I'll dance, but uh, I, I not feel for like, just the, not just I don't know. It's not, I don't think it's for me. <laughs> no, I, we agree. I think it's also our age, right? We're all the same. I'm waiting for it to get shut down. <laughs> 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 Maybe I'll get more you know, people come back to Instagram. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, I, I think we were joking around this, but like I see all these doctors who are on TikTok. You yeah. know, you see this all the time, yeah. right, Jeff? Yeah. And it's like, I, you know, the ones who are on there giving medical advice or whatever, that's fine. But there's some who are like doing the thing. Like they're dancing and they're like acting like these 17-year-olds. I think it's so ridiculous. Yeah. I think those guys are I wonder, I don't, I wonder, I'm just, I uh, wonder what's going to happen to TikTok. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen to all the fo- like the, the, the kids? Where are they going to go? Well, I mean, I'm hearing that Instagram's making a new... Uh, a new platform called Reels, something similar to TikTok. Same concept. To pull them. To pull them over. Some people are actually getting offers to wow. switch over. That's wow. what I hear. It's on the tech news. I've been yeah. paying attention a little bit. What this kind of offers some, do you think they're getting? I don't know. I heard something somewhere around the range of like 100 grand. 100 to grand. To switch over. To switch over. Yeah. 100 grand just to, just to make I an account. I would do it. I mean, That's I, if amazing. I were them, if I were in their shoes, I would do it because it's, it's another platform. Yeah. All you're yeah, going to do is just grow your brand. So, I mean, it's not a bad, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's insane. Have you guys ever heard of Triller? No. So Triller's the other one that's becoming, like, it's been around for a while. Yeah. And a lot of celebrities are on it already. And it's like the anti-TikTok is owned by Americans. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> but it's a very similar concept. Yeah, yeah your dad doesn't go to China. Yeah. <laughs> I think Facebook did that when, um, you know, when they were just on Capitol Hill. Yeah. And they were talking about how when Facebook was trying to buy Instagram um, that many years ago. Mm-hmm. Basically, Mark Zuckerberg was threatening Insta- Instagram by saying, "We're going to build the exact same platform. Yeah, Facebook's going to build it. So either sell to us, or uh, we're about yeah. to build and it." And then in Instagram here. tried to buy Snapchat. Remember? Or oh, something like yeah, that. Facebook. Like that. Yeah, to buy yeah, and then the same same concept. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, but I guess I don't know what happened. Snapchat kind of died yeah. off a little bit. Were you ever on Snapchat? Yeah, I was, yeah. and I had a I had a. It's pretty much the same following on well, it seemed that way the yeah. views wise. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I, that is, they don't really show you the number. I don't, I don't really like. Yeah, the, true. How many like followers? followers? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, but you see how many views you have. But do you, the traction was good on that. Yeah, and then I stopped using it, and then obviously you don't use it, you lose it. Kind yeah, of totally. So. Yeah, same. I, I never really did the cha- Snapchat yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, really interesting. Snapchat did kind of fall off. I feel like no one talks about it anymore. No, nah, yeah. I feel like TikTok. I mean, took some people over. are like, "Oh, follow me on Snapchat." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> Are you, is that still around? Is that <laughs> still a thing? <laughs> and so tell you have uh, two sons. Yeah, I have two sons. 11? One's 11 and one's going to be two. Wow. Yeah, blessings, man. And uh, when do they get to have social media accounts? I don't know. They, my, my oldest son's like, Dad, I want to be famous like you. I'm like, yeah, of course. No, you don't, man. It's not. I so, don't think you know what you're asking for. <laughs> yeah. So just to bring it back to the medical, so yeah. um, what, are, what's, what are we doing for school for the 11-year-old? Yeah. Year? What's the plan? Uh, he's been going on a lot of uh, these uh, streaming classes and stuff like that. You know, the new, what is it? Uh, so what grade is he in now? Uh, I think he's in fifth grade. He's fifth going grade. to fifth grade. Yeah. yeah. And so are they planning on opening school this year? Or yeah. Well, things? I guess it's going to be online, all online. Uh, virtual. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's kind of crazy. Man. It's a big decision for parents. I yeah. mean, I totally understand why, you know, there's, it's going to be different in public schools and private schools, yeah. whether, because a lot of private schools have either enough money to like socially distant mm-hmm. or to have enough money where the, you know, the kids have good internet connections can actually be paying attention during class can have someone watching them during the day Yeah, where the public schools don't have that much of an opportunity. So yeah. there's a lot of controversy right now about whether people want to let their kids go and yeah, complicated. Yeah. I think it's going to definitely affect the youth uh, yeah. as far as uh, education. I think you know they're not going to. I don't feel like they're going to get the same quality of uh, education as over a you know over a screen. 
Yeah. So are you so. teaching your son uh, things that he can learn when he's not in school? I'm teaching him more things he can use in life. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> instead of like he's he's just, obviously he'll learn the stuff yeah. in school, the basic stuff, and uh, I'm just trying to give him like you know keep him, you know keep him on point about you know life and street life and you yeah. know just stuff that that he's gonna run into later in life, you know so. No, I love that. Um, but I mean, obviously, I want my 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 kids to be well educated. I mean, everybody wants yeah. that for their children. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I am a little concerned about where the where the future is going as far as education. So, well, that's one thing that I've, I've always been inspired. You know, I've known you for years, Mario. Yeah. I've always been inspired by you. How long has it been? At, but like four or five years. Five years almost. Five years. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. And one thing I've always inspired me about you is that <clears throat> everyone that looks at you yeah. just sees this perfect polished life. Like right, like it's every not photo. And no, I, I know, it's but dull and rusty, everyone man. that looks at no, but everyone that looks at it just sees that, like, oh my god, perfect. Yeah. And like you have such a great way of like just having such a humble attitude and nature Always, about yourself. Man. That's not an act. I love either. that. That's just no, who I am. no, I know, yeah, I know. I've known you long enough now. I know it's real. I hang out with really rich friends. Like, yeah. You know, I know like celebrity good friends or like Tyler Perry's and all them. They're yeah, good friends yeah. of mine, and uh, they're extremely wealthy and they've done really well for themselves and mm -hmm. they own a million things. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I, I just sometimes they just call me to hang out just because yeah. they, they like me, you know. Yeah, and, and then just, you also hang out with me and Schweb. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, know? you see, there's no, I don't, I don't, I just like good people yeah. and I like to hang out with good vibes, good energy. Yeah, absolutely. So. And I love that about you. And I love that no matter what part of the journey you're on, you're always focused on winning, though. The comeback. Yeah. You're always, you're well, always. I mean, I lost a it. little. You know, I got a little blurry vision on that. You know, I kind of, I kind of got in a little. You know, little slump or whatever you want to call it. But I mean, it's all that's. Part of life, but that's the cool thing is that everyone goes through the slumps. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. nobody doesn't go through them. And then talking about going from a peak to a slump again, you're kind of that'll shake anybody's foundation. anybody. Yeah. And everyone goes through it at some point. And it's cool to watch someone like you or hear someone like you talk about it because we all look at you like, wow, if he can go through it, then like you know maybe it's not as bad as what I thought because we we look at someone like you and say, well, God, your life is perfect. Yeah, and so it's nice. I hate to hearing that honestly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Hey, whatever. But it's nice to hear it because it makes us all feel a little bit better that you know we're all going through the same things. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank so, you for being so honest and no, open yeah, and course. sharing. I mean, just, it's just the honest truth. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So uh, any last wisdoms or tips for health and wellness during COVID? If you're working out at home and you can't yeah. get to a gym, what, what's your recommendation for the average guy? Um, you know, get your get your cardio in. I, people say don't go outside, but there's no scientifically proven. It's not scientifically proven that yeah. it's floating in the air. Or whatever. You should go outside. <laughs> yeah, you should yeah. go outside. We I agree. think you get your so immune, you get your immune system up. Yep. Yeah, so get, what are you, what are you doing outside? Uh, outside, I run about two to three miles. Right here, I hit. I I live on uh, Largemont, so I work. I run all the way from my house to to Wilshire and run back up. It's about two and a half miles. Amazing. And I just okay. I run and you know I kind of run, jog, run, stop, walk. Just as long as I'm out, you know, staying uh, active and uh, doing. You know, you can do push ups, crunches. Just you know, you can do squats. How many push-ups can you do, get a, Mario? <laughs> get a couple gallons of uh, water, man. You don't got no weights, you know? That's <laughs> prison style, prison style. <laughs> you know what's really funny is that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I have a mop with two arrowhead jugs on it. And that's what I, keep keep, that's keep the juices flowing, man. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, my, my, I, had a, I have a gym in my building, mm -hmm. and they re, they keep closing, opening, and closing. Mine now we're too. back to closed again. Mine too, yeah. So we're back to the mop. Yeah, back yeah. to the mop. What do you guys think head? about them opening it? Do you think it was a planned thing? They knew people would get more sick by opening again? No, no, no. I don't think so. No, because I, I think they genuinely wanted to try to help the economy. Yeah. And it did. It worked. People were but, complaining too, like crazy. Yeah, I mean, how long can you keep us cooped inside? Yeah. You know? It was I, definitely an experience, man. I think what they did, they, they intended to help the economies by opening, but they didn't actually have a plan for how to do it safely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the unknown variable, like, you know, as I've talked about before, is, you know, all these protests happen at the same time. So just having so many people packed together, um, unfortunately, may have led to it. It's hard to say. We can't say it for sure, but may, in my opinion, probably contributed to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but God bless. Hopefully, we all get through this. So, we all will get through this. Yeah, so, I feel we will, but yeah, it is a little. I feel a little weary, but I'm just gonna <laughs> truck, keep on trucking. You know. Yeah, so where do our, you. so where do our uh, viewers and listeners find you? Oh, you can find me on Instagram. Yeah, talking about that, and I just opened up YouTube. So what's that's your fairly, what's your handle? Tell tell them where to find uh, you. Uh, it's uh mar at. Mario eight eight five five eight eight five five at Mario eight eight five five and YouTube channel is super exciting. Yeah, posting the great there, content. So. <laughs> yeah, we love it. We love the content on YouTube. Yeah. Keep it up, and we're Thank happy you. to continue to see your growth and success, man. Congratulations, I appreciate you guys. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>
that was a damn good episode, wasn't it? I loved it. Every I minute. think it comes to that time in everyone's life where they go onto their uh, podcast app. Yeah. And they copy the link. Yeah. And they start texting it to their friends. Yeah. And they say, send it. listen to this damn good episode. Yeah, especially a men's health episode. This is this a is men's huge. health episode. Yeah, send it to your man, send it to your friend, send it to your dad. Your brother. Your brother. And share, subscribe. Buddies. And give us five stars. Whoever you're playing uh, video games with right now. Yeah. Online. Anybody. Send it to them. Yeah. They need to know this. Awesome episode. We really got to hear. Mario Rodriguez, he's sharing all the insights. Thank you so much, Mario, for coming on today. Appreciate it, Mario. Yeah. And stay tuned and keep subscribing. Next week, we had a great episode. So we're Fantastic. super excited. Better. All right, guys. Thank you.